Hey guys. What's up y'all? Who is ready for the Olympics? Um, I know I am. I've been waiting years for them to be to put softball in the Olympics. Honestly guys, I am so pumped. pumped. Me too. The Olympics is one of my favorite events in all of sports. Oh, absolutely. As much as I love college football, I love the Olympics. Yep. But we're gonna talk, talk about it right after the intro. Right after the intro. Thank you so much guys for tuning yep. in. Welcome to our gold medal edition of Batter Up. Usually on this show we have special guests, but these next two weeks this will all be about Olympic softball. This is going to be so exciting. If you guys are new to our channel, um, welcome. If you're not new and you watch every week, hey guys, welcome back. As a reminder, once we hit our first major goal of 250 subscribers, there's going to be a giveaway for one of you. So make sure you guys subscribe so you never miss any of our action, any of the content, so you guys can always be a part of our show. We're at 109 subscribers. Click that subscribe button, Please guys. Please click it. It's going to be so awesome. We're so excited. Okay, so before we get into the game so far, I want to talk about one thing I'm disappointed at regarding softball at these games. Yeah. Now, for those of you who don't know, both softball and baseball, for them to come back, they had to team up. They had to use the same venue to get back in the games. That was the deal. Okay. Which is fine. At least, at least we're back in the games, but also too, it's kind of like, man, you could have had uh, your own softball field. Like, it's yeah, just, I don't know. Yeah, and I'm gonna get into that in a second. They're playing in, in two converted Japanese baseball stadiums in Fukushima and Yokohama. So what they're doing is, they've got places where they tear, they they pull up the turf, mm -hmm. and there's dirt, and then they put the turf back down, and then pull up other places for baseball. So it's basically just pulling up turf and laying it back down. Not too bad. The dirt. So it's not horrible. But it's funny when you're watching softball and it's a baseball field and the bases are inside the where the, yeah. where the you know the dirt part for baseball is. It just looks so much smaller. But I understand it. I'm just happy to have softball back. Oh, I agree. But here's my thing: if they can have separate separate venues for beach volleyball, they can have and I love beach volleyball. Softball. I love beach volleyball. I used to play tournaments when I was younger. They can do it for softball. Sorry. I agree. Um, Maybe a little but, bit in the next four years. Who knows? Well, they're not having softball in the next Olympics, from what, what? I understand. Yeah. Why? Basically, that's it's rude. Well, basically, it's up to the the city that's hosting. Right. Um, and so, like, it won't be there for the the Paris Games, but it it is coming back for the LA Games, I believe. Because, okay. Good. Yeah. So, um, it's not going to be in every Olympic thing, I don't believe. It's up to it's up to the host city. Okay. You know, as long as, as long as we get it sometimes, then I think it's the fine. reason I don't think France is doing it is because they don't have a softball team. Well, yeah, I don't think that they have they don't, you know, they don't you know, have the facilities for that. Well, no, it's not about the facilities, they just don't have a national softball team, so therefore they're right. not as much invested into it. But I don't think it's not really big there, though. Well, it's it's not really big there. It's it's not, but it, but the thing is, it is becoming a huge sport mm -hmm. around the world. But the thing is, as it should, well, whatever, it's back. And we're going to cover every game. Yep. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is rule differences in the Olympics. Because there's a few of them and they're okay. big differences as compared to what oh, yeah, we're absolutely. used to in the States, mm -hmm. right? A major rule difference in international play is that pitchers can actually leap. Which bothers me so much because crow hopping is, um, it, you just can't do that. Like, that means, that's... for some of you that don't understand leaping, most people understand when you're pitching, you're, you're, uh, back foot has to, you know, stay on the ground and drag mm -hmm. and be your drag foot. Not an international play. Both feet can be off the ground when they pitch. That's crazy. But I, I guess it's because in, I mean, internationally, you never know what the rules are in other in other countries. Well, some other countries don't have it set as stringent as we do. Yeah, but here, like, you can't do that yeah. or else it's a ball. You know. Now, it's I mean, pitch. You know, also. In order to speed up the pace of play, there can be no armbands for pitch or hitting calls. So, which is fine. I'm, I'm used to that. We don't have that. Yeah, on, on but team, but so. I mean, in college, armbands are a huge deal huge because deal, yeah. you know the coach calls in a three number. We did it. You know when mm -hmm. we when I when I coached you, we did a three digit number. Yeah, you guys looked at your armband. We went on for us on. And coach to Mark's me, that's not signs. that's not slow. But I can understand they're worried about pace of play. That's fine. They have a twenty second pitch clock. That's fine. So if you it, so two things that happen, you're if you don't pitch in the twenty seconds, it's a ball, and if you're not in the batter's box within twenty seconds, it's a strike. Okay. Hmm. So, and batters are forced unless it's a dead ball. 
batters are forced to keep one foot in the box at all times. That means, you know, you have one foot in the box, you're looking, getting your sign, getting right back in and hitting. That's and crazy. Again, and I don't mind them. I, you know, when you're watching it, I mean, games go an hour and a half, two hours. I mean, it's 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 yeah. quick. So I don't mind it. Um, and and I'll be honest, I wish some of these rules were here. Were here. Yeah. Um, but it is what it is, and and it's fun to watch. So. Yeah. Okay, so just to explain a little bit more, there's six teams playing in the Tokyo games. Um, they all play each other, every single one. They count head to head, and then um, it goes to runs allowed for the tiebreaker. So the tiebreaker, so what happens is only four teams make the medal round. And I'll be honest, this, this one I'm not a huge fan of because I would like to see the top four teams mm -hmm. play a playoff, and then the top two teams play the gold medal game, and then the, and then the bottom two, the play other two the, teams play yeah. the bronze medal game. But what they're doing is the top two teams play the gold medal game and the next two teams play the bronze medal game. It Which is what fine, it is. Yeah. It's, it's fine. I just would, I prefer a playoff because anything can happen in one game. Yeah. Right? I um, mean, we saw that with the Women's College World Series with James Madison. and ab I, Absolutely. Literally. Anything can happen in one game, right? Yeah. Um, to me, it's more exciting that way. But that's what they chose to do and that's mm -hmm. fine. So we'll start, you know, we'll start with, let's tell you who the six teams are. So United States. Mm -hmm. They are the favorite to win the gold medal along with Japan. Our favorite, you know, you know, United States in the four Olympics that softball has been held. Mm -hmm. uh, United States has won three gold medals. Japan has won one. Yep. Japan won the gold medal in the 2016 games by beating the U.S. in the gold medal game. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Japan is obviously the host country. Yeah, so they're they're rooting to win for sure. Yeah, I mean, not having fans in the stands though kind of changes things yeah. because usually. What's, but what's really cool is you can hear the the team the teammates talking to each other and like what they're saying, right. like, "Hey, you got it," or you know, "You're doing right. great," or you know, "Hey, pick it up next time," or whatever. Like you can hear what they're saying. But what cool. I'm missing though, so far, is the pageantry. Like yeah. to me, when a host country is hosting and their team is playing or whatever, they're or their team is competing, they're loud, they're rooting yeah. for them. It and, and sometimes that energy propels them to a win or a gold medal or whatever. Honestly. And so it is different. I'm not getting that. I still love the Olympics. I, and I'm still going to watch every day. Literally, yeah. I'm still going to record it. But to me, I'm not, that energy is not there. And that's yeah. so hard because these players play or compete their whole lives. Some of them train their whole lives to get to this one moment yeah. and there's nobody there yeah to, to me like the energy of the olympics really reminds me of like high school and like playoffs in high school like i don't know if if, if y'all are in high school or if you're not in high school if you get to high school and you guys make playoffs the playoff energy it's, is it's crazy. like the season energy is here the playoff energy is through the roof right. i mean that's what the olympics energy reminds right. me of and so when it's not there it's like oh but it's okay because we're still playing so you know so but in the last seven world championships the u.s and japan have met in the gold medal game all seven times yeah so that's so they there is a rivalry there right. and let me tell you something japan's legit yeah they're and very if you good. don't think if you and they've got three studs on oh, their roster yeah um then you've we've got canada mm -hmm. we've got mexico australia and italy um the funny thing is and you're, we're going to talk about this in a second but each of these teams have players that we know from the states that yeah. played college ball here mm -hmm. and some of them have grown up here were born here and we'll talk about that and how that how that affects things in a second yep all right guys so we're gonna jump right into um the united states team which is our fave um monica abbott is led for the leading pitcher and let me just say what's really funny is that when i was in um, middle school i did a um a project on her and i did a project all about her schedule and you know i really looked up to her she was like my favorite softball player so it's really cool to see her in the olympics which is really freaking yeah. cool and then they also have kat osterman who's a stud she played at university of texas one yeah. you know she's both pitchers there they're in their late 30s they're Literally. the best pitchers in the world oh well like, yeah i mean just period i, I mean, mean <laughs> Yeah, and, and we'll talk about their their first two games in a second. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to talk about the positional players for the United States. You've got Ali Aguilar, mm -hmm. who's a stud. Oh, yeah. Haley McClenney, who's right now is on fire. We'll Killing talk it. about that in a Killing second. It. Kelsey Stewart. And then you've got... We've got Aubrey Monroe, who used to play for the University of Florida when Lauren Hager did. And then we have Rachel Garcia and Bubba Nichols, who played in the Women's College World Series for UCLA. Just got done. Literally, yeah. they got done, and now they're in the Olympics. That's Literally. that's that's awesome. Yeah, it's really freaking cool. So you play on the two biggest stages, really, Literally. That, in, in softball in your life. Literally, which everyone watches. Within a few watches. months of each other. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. It is pretty cool. Okay, so let's talk about Japan for a second. So 
They are led by Yamato Fujita mm -hmm. and Yu Yamamoto. Th that, those are their two power hitters, right. two of their power hitters. They've also got another one, mm -hmm. and we'll talk about her in a little bit too. Yep. Um, and yep. then you got... And then we got Canada. Okay. They're um, led by pitcher Daniel Laurie. Stud. Super great. And they've got outfielder Larissa Franklin. She's good. Yep. And Daniel Laurie, too, I think I believe played for Scrapyard for a season or so. Yeah, before, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for Mexico, they're led by Dallas Escobedo at pitcher, who also played for Scrapyard a little yep. bit. Mm -hmm. um, Sydney Romero, who we all know we all played know. for her, her college ball at Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Her sister played at Michigan. Yep. Her, um, then you've got Tori Vidalis. If you know anything about Texas A&M softball, and I do, she played her college Double ball. Backdrop, yeah. She played her college ball at Texas A&M. She was an absolute stud. Oh yeah. And played her travel ball locally also with Impact, Impact Gold. Gold. Mm -hmm. So you know, she I think she played for Jazz or yeah, something. Yeah, something like that. Um, yeah. So we've got for Australia, we've got Gabby Plain, who plays for the University of Washington. Super good. And then we've got infielder Stacy McManus. Yep. All right, so let's get into Italy. Okay. They're led by pitcher Greta Cacchetti. Yep. They're also led by infielder Amanda Fama, who mm -hmm. used to play for the Scrapyard Dogs and won the NPF Championship with Monica Abbott the yeah. year they won the Cows Cup, so that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That is cool. Okay, so I want to add something real quick. So each country makes up the rules for who they allow to play for them. Mm -hmm. Now, you have to have somebody in your lineage that was born in that country usually. Right. Mm -hmm. So like for instance, Tori Vidal is somebody in her family, grandmother, grandfather was probably born in Mexico. That's why she's playing for Mexico. Mm -hmm. Now, because she was born here, the US has to give her a release for these Olympic games to say it's okay to play for them. Right. And you know, cause there's a girl that plays for Mexico too. Her last name is O'Toole, which is, I think is Irish actually. Yeah, something like that. But her family, one of her family members was born in Mexico. Yeah. So. It, each country makes up the rules, not the International Olympic Committee. So that's why you're seeing American players mm -hmm. play for other countries. Yeah. So guys, let's talk about the games so far mm -hmm. that, have, that have taken place. Okay. Day one. Yep. Two days ago, so day before yesterday from when we're shooting this video yeah. and when it releases, uh, Australia and Japan was the first two teams to play. Mm -hmm. Now, it's funny because the opening ceremonies don't even take place until late tonight, early tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's funny that games are already taking place, but that's how they yeah. do it. Yeah. Um, but Australia and Japan played first. Um, Japan started Yukiko Ueno mm -hmm. at pitcher, and she's one of the best in the world. Oh, yeah. Um, she's a stud. You know, and she shut Australia down. Um, I mean, they got run rolled 8-1. to one. That's 8 to 1 in 5 mind. innings. 5, five innings. innings. That blows my mind. Um, Japan flat out barreled the ball up in this game. Yeah. As we said earlier, players to watch, look out for Yu Yamamoto. Mm -hmm. She went absolutely off, off in, in this game. game. She went two for three with a two-run bomb and an RBI single. Her two-run bomb was the walk-off. Yeah, this game. her two-run bomb, basically, like she said, was the walk-off because it run-rolled them. Yeah. Um, Naito and Fujita both hit bombs as well for, yep. for Japan. When I tell you they can hit, guys. They can they freaking can hit. hit. You know, next up was Canada versus Mexico. Canada won four to zero. You know, so Jen Salling for Canada was on fire in that game. Okay, mm -hmm, absolutely. She had an RBI single and a home run. Canada shut them out. Yeah. Um, you know, it is what it is. You know, then next up, and I stayed up to watch this game: U.S. versus Italy. Yep. Um, let me just say, they wore the all red uniforms. Dude, they looked freaking so good. They it, looked the, so the red good. uniforms with the, with, with the blue accents and then the blue socks. It they was were so, awesome. Oh, like, it was so good. Nike Nike does a great job on uniforms, period, but these uniforms for the U.S. were the uh, best. They were so good. Kat, Kat Osterman got to start the game for the U.S., yeah. and then Greta Cacchetti got to start for Italy as yeah. well. Uh, Osterman struck out the first two batters. She hit two runners early, which was weird. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the U.S. threatened in the bottom of the first. They had runners in score... Uh, on second and third with, with like, w one out. Couldn't get the runners across. Dang. We'll talk about that more yeah. in a second. Scoreless and both teams really had a no hitter through three. So mm -hmm. even though the U.S. was threatening, they, uh, you know, they they got walked a couple of times. So mm -hmm. you know, and then they stole a base, and then I think there was a pass ball that got them to third. That's why yeah. they had runners in scoring position. So the first hit of the game was by the U.S. in the bottom of the fourth. Michelle Moultrie makes um, the game one to zero with an RBI single, and it gets one to zero U.S. after four. Yep. Italy had one hit in the game in the fifth by filler. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the fifth, Lacatania came in to pitch for Italy. Yep. And the U.S. left the bases juiced. 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 But bases did, loaded. But did not. But only scored one run to make it two to nothing after five. Yep. After six, the same two to nothing score. It's I mean, good for this us. game shouldn't have been close. This no. game shouldn't have been close. But we'll, again, we'll talk about more of that in a second. Yeah. Monica Abbott came in in the seventh to close out the game for the U.S. 
uh, she got called for an illegal pitch, but that didn't matter. I yeah. mean, her illegal pitch got called. Well, it couldn't have been because she crow up because apparently that's allowed. <laughs> <laughs> apparently that's allowed. So yeah. Um, no, they, they're saying that her foot wasn't on the rubber or something like that. I, I don't remember exactly what it was, Man. but, um, but they couldn't hit her. She struck out all three batters. Well, who can hit her? She pitches like 71. No, she pitches in the mid seventies. Yeah. I mean, 77. I mean, dude, I'm sorry. I wouldn't be able to see the ball. I'd be like, huh? Yeah. Like an old woman. So they, so the U S opens up the Olympics with a two to nothing win. Kat Osterman finished this game with nine strikeouts. That's every time she's taken out. She could have had 10, 11 or yeah. 12 had she pitched the last inning. Yep. But I understand they were trying to, you know, they're trying to save them. Yeah. So let's move on to day two. So U S and Canada last night started the, started the day off. Yeah. Monica oh, Abbott got the start for the U S in this game and Monica Abbott's Monica Abbott. Well, she, she just does good all the time. This time U S was in white jerseys and blue pants this time. So, it was okay. wasn't it wasn't my favorite. I, I love the red uniforms, but the USA on the front of the white jerseys was iridescent. So when it yeah. when you were it was, facing it, like, it was it, really cool. Yeah, when you were facing it, it was blue. But when they turned when they turned to their right, it would turn red. That's it was kind of cool. neat. Yeah. Um, Sarah Grunwagen got the start for Canada. You know, US threatened early but couldn't get any runners across again. It was scoreless through four innings. Yeah. So it was like zero zero, which is crazy. You know, in the fifth, Amanda Chittister hits an RBI. A uh, single opposite field to bring in Haley McClaney and uh, for the first RBI with runners in scoring position so far in these games. Yep. And then Bubba Nichols had the bases loaded and was bases brought in loaded and brought in to pinch hit and struck out looking. Yeah, I mean that's a you know Bubba Nichols. It's her it was her first about at the Olympics. You know she's fresh out of college, and you know I applaud them for bringing her in. I mean you know what I mean you're up two to nothing. You know. Um, you can that, afford to bring her in. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's one it's one of those things where that's a tough spot with the bases loaded. You know she wanted to jack one. Yeah, she wanted to hit one over yeah. the fence, but uh, uh, struck out looking. It's okay. You know, score is one to nothing. U.S. after five. Gronwagen hits a double in the sixth to the gap to break up the no hitter, and McClaney with a gun to Monroe at home. Yep. To throw out the lead runner at home to keep the score one and nothing with with now one. That out. play was insane. Honestly, I mean, they were you know I, I don't know why they didn't keep her at third because they would have had runners on second and third yep. with no outs. Absolutely. Like I mean, a ground ball gets you a run. Yeah, like literally, and our and a fly ball to right field gets so you a run. So that I mean, either you know. tells me the coach didn't knew that, or was trying to force something because maybe he thought they weren't going to win. I don't believe that's the case. I believe he was you know. Just trying to get something across the but board. But the U.S. players, especially their middle end fielders, are some of the best players they're, in the world. They're going to throw you out. Yeah, they're, they're going to throw, throw, throw you out. I mean, and then the USA intentionally walks Larissa Franklin to get to Harshman. You know, Larissa Franklin, I mean, she went 0 for 2 in, at the beginning of this game. So I don't know why they intentionally walked her. She's a great player, don't get yeah. me wrong, for Canada. But not sure why she walked her, but she got to Har Harshman. And it worked because Abbott struck her out to, to end the inning, leaving runners on second and third. Win the game. You know, and then, you know, now to the seventh we go, right? You know, Canada went to Danielle Laurie, their best pitcher, to try and keep it a one-run game. Yep. This is the fourth pitcher they, they've used in this game to try to keep the Americans off balance. It worked. I mean, they can't, you know, they didn't go I mean, through much did, of the lineup. They didn't go through much of the lineup, but also they didn't see the same pitcher right. for more than one at bat. So It was they, actually a smart, smart deal. Yeah. Okay, so let me talk about Haley McClaney for a second again. So, she, I think she's had nine at bats. But in her seven legal at bats, because she's been walked twice, she's seven, seven for, for seven. seven. I mean, seven for seven blows my mind. And and a couple of those are infield hits where she's beating out the throw. Yep. Like the the one last night, it was a hit to the right side of the infield. The second baseman, by the time the second baseman got to it and threw to first, she was, she was already a step past the bag. Already Crazy. there. She's so fast. It yeah. blows my mind. So um, you know, Monica Abbott in this game pitched a complete game with nine strikeouts, and the U.S. won one to nothing. That's crazy. I mean, one to nothing. Which is crazy because, you know, you think you have to put more runs on the board, but when you play solid defense and you, I mean, you outrun hits, I mean, I mean, you out, you know, you outrun the hits you have. I mean, you're going to you know, win the game. Yes. In the first two games, the U.S. hasn't allowed to run in these games. Okay. So far. I think the big story right now for the U.S. and something they need to be concerned with is their bats are ice cold. Yeah. But you, I mean, you need more runs to win. I mean, with runners in scoring line, position, they're one for eight. Yeah. With runners in scoring position right now. Now, I know it's early. And you don't want to peak too early. You know, you want to peak at the right time when you play. Because here's the thing. They played Japan um, in the last game uh, uh, of the opening round. Mm -hmm. Then they'll, you know, more than likely have to play them in the gold medal game, right? Yeah. 
So those bats need to get going. I know. I mean, but also, I mean, I, I don't know. I just, they, they need to put more runs on the board. Yeah. You know, three, I believe three that, runs is not going to cut it. Um, I believe they will get it going. Yeah, I agree. You know, um, they've got a few games to iron out the kinks with the bats. Yeah. Um, Japan will be the toughest to test, like I said, at the in the last game of the opening round. But here, here's the thing. If Japan and the U.S. go into that game both undefeated, what do you do? I don't think you want to show much. Yeah, right. You, you want to show as little as possible. So, Because it, it doesn't matter at that point. If you go in undefeated, you're guaranteed the gold medal game. Right. So I don't know that you want to go in. You could pitch whoever. You could pitch, you know, Rachel Garcia. Yeah. You know, and it doesn't matter who wins that game. Um now I'm not saying you lose. You know you want to go in and lose. lose or have, yeah, you know, but I mean no, you can honestly you can that. pitch whoever because you're yeah. already in the game. You know it doesn't really matter. But you know you're gonna have to play Japan twice to beat more than likely yeah. to win the gold medal. So right. it's gonna be interesting, and I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. Mm -hmm. You know now uh, Japan and Mexico last night. Japan started Yukiko Ueno in the circle. One thing I've noticed about Japan thus far is that they don't make errors in the field. No, they either they they must practice defense eight hours a day because their defense is solid. They're very good defensively. Solid. solid. Like they they don't make an error. Like I mean, knock on wood, but like they they don't make an error, which is crazy to me. Yeah, I mean Mexico started O'Toole in the circle, and I thought she pitched pretty well. Mm -hmm. There was no score after one. In the bottom of the second, Yamada Fujita hits another solo shot to make it one, one to zero nothing. For Japan so two. you know. Fujita right now has hit two home runs and you know in her you know yeah. in the first two games. So, you know, Mexico made it interesting in this game, only losing three to two. Yeah, and not too I was bad. shocked because I thought Japan was gonna run Blow them out, yeah. Um, then the last game, uh, which was early this morning, was Australia and Italy, and Australia shut Italy out one to nothing. Yeah, I mean, um, these games are so close. They are close. Why? Like, I mean, except for the run rule game at the beginning, but why? Like, they, more, I mean, more runs, runs, hits, like, you know. Well, I, I think right now, I think what you're seeing with some of these players is nerves. I mean, it's yeah. it's a world, you're, you're playing for your country. You're not playing yeah. for your college. You're True. not playing for, I mean, there's you know, really no, there's really team. no room to kind of. You know, th there's nerves. I, I mean, obviously pitching right now. With Monica Abbott, Kat Osterman, Yukiko Ueno, you know, Danielle Laurie. I, the pitching is going to be, I, I, right now, is the story because the mm -hmm. games are close. Right. And, and except for Japan's uh, run roll, the, the score scoring has been kind of low. But, you know, I think what's going to happen, though, is they get used to this. Mm -hmm. I think the scoring is going to go up. Uh, I hope so. And um, except for maybe the medal round, you know, yeah. in that's the gold gonna, medal that's probably game, be that's going to be low scoring. But, uh, yeah, I think the bats are going to pick up in the next few games for yeah. sure. Well, guys, that's the end of the first two days of competition at the yep. Olympics for softball. And don't forget to like and subscribe this video. If you guys like it, leave a comment down below. Tell us who you think is going to win the gold medal. I think it's going to be the US. Or the bronze medal. I think it's going to be the U.S. So. Yeah, I think so, too. All right, guys. So, other than that. Yep, that's it. This is the end of Batter Up. And don't forget to keep swinging for the fences. Bye, bye guys. Bye, guys.